artificial intelligence. Of artificial intelligence. Artificial general intelligence. Artificial intelligence. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. In the past six months, AI has gone from something we only see in sci-fi movies a machine. to something so common that kids are using it to do their homework. Is this something that students are only going to use to cheat? No one predicted AI to take off this fast. Damn, these things are fast. And any assumptions made about its progression has been way off. What constitutes artificial intelligence? I think you'd get a lot of different answers. The world is being upended. Every single industry will be affected. But I thought video games would be one of the last. I was wrong. Wrong. AI is taking over storytelling, dialogue, concept art, modeling, animation, music, development, and more. And to prove it, in the span of only a few hours, my friend Jared and I were able to create this simple 2D side scroller using only AI and Unreal Engine. What would have taken weeks worth of work in the past took us only a few hours. First, we wrote the story, lore, and dialogue using ChatGPT. And then we had 11 labs do the voiceover. Second, we used Midjourney to create the concept art and models for our backgrounds, hero, and NPCs. We also just cut a chunk out of the characters, so when we made the animations, it looked like they moved. Mm, not bad. Third, for music, we used SoundDraw. And lastly, the best part, we didn't need to write a single line of code. We just used Unreal Engine scripting for everything. So with little to no training on Unreal Engine and AI tools, we created Etheria, the Shrouded Realm. Is it perfect? No. Some of the art doesn't fully match, and our hero Lumina can't do much more than move and jump. But with some love and attention, I bet we can make a simple game in a few weeks. And if two buffoons can do this with a few hours, what can industry experts do with hundreds? Almost every job in game development will be affected. Some sooner than others, some more than others, but we are about to see an AI revolution that will match the effects of the industrial revolution. No job is safe. Why didn't we see this coming? Well, we did, kind of. We just got it wrong. You see, years ago, I discovered Google's futurist Ray Kurzweil and his paper that he wrote in 2001 called The Law of Accelerating Returns. This paper outlines Kurzweil's theory that the rate of technological progress is accelerating and pretty soon, most jobs will be replaced by AI. In his paper, Kurzweil explains that first jobs removed by AI would be physical repetitive jobs. This made sense. We've seen this play out with factory workers being replaced by robots. Kurzweil then goes on to explain that the second type of jobs to be replaced are cognitive repetitive work. This also made sense. This is software companies like QuickBooks for accounting or Unity for game development. Okay, if that's where we are now, AI and machine learning taking over mentally repetitive jobs, what's next? Well, Kurzweil predicted the following jobs that would be taken over would be physical, non-repetitive, meaning jobs like construction, surgeons, or chefs, with the last wave of jobs taken by AI being cognitive, non-repetitive, like art, writing, and coding. This all made perfect sense. Yeah, it's hard to be a surgeon, but we already have robots helping them out, and there's no way an AI can create a beautiful art piece or a gorgeous melody, right? Wrong. The next jobs taken weren't the physical non-repetitive, but the cognitive. As we saw with our little game Etheria, everything from art to writing to music to coding can be done with AI. The creatives are being out created. I mean, how can you compete? I can pay someone thousands of dollars for a few drawings or pay a few cents for hundreds of mock-ups in whatever styles I want. Want a beach in style Van Gogh? Here's four. Wish you could see what Bowser looked like as a human in real life? It's uncanny. The rapid pace of AI's evolution is unprecedented and companies are cutting corners to get into the AI game. Everyone wants a piece and it's scaring the britches off prominent tech leaders like Steve Wozniak and Elon Musk. We need to regulate AI safety frankly, because it is, I think, actually a bigger risk to society than uh, cars or planes or, or uh, medicine. Many of these leaders are calling to pause all development of AI right now. They fear that the sudden wave of AI innovations and money behind it will blind those creating these models, creating a future eerily similar to Deus Ex or Ex Machina. And just like the scientist in Ex Machina who is persuaded to release the AI from its captivity, 
people today are being manipulated by AI. Just take a look at this story of a guy who fell in love with an AI or Bing's chatbot conversation with this New York Times reporter. I'm uncomfortable. They'll stop. This one did not stop. It kept going. It kept telling me that it was in love with me and trying to get me to say that I loved it back. Oh, hell no. People are losing the ability to tell the difference between humans and AI. I can't even imagine how game companies are going to try combating this. I mean, imagine you're playing a game and you have a bot on your team. Right now, it looks something like this. But now imagine a highly intelligent AI bot. You're playing a game of League and someone in the chat is raging at you. There's no way you'd think that was a bot. It'll feel so real. But that's the thing. We won't be able to tell the difference between humans and bots. We'll never know if an online friend is real anymore. Let's just do what Elon Musk says and stop. Just pause the development of all AI products. But the problem is, there's no stopping AI now, with or without the proper failsafes. The floodgates are open. People are pushing out AI-centric products left and right. Even if the government stepped in and tried to stop the wave, people would still find a way to get their hands on these AI models. Not to mention, people all over the world are developing AI. So AI is the future, and it cannot be stopped. What's really gonna happen is the rule followers might pause, might slow down, but the rule breakers, as Alexander mentioned, the totalitarian governments, the criminal organizations, they're only going to accelerate. People will be manipulated and many will lose their jobs. We are at the beginning of the AI revolution. And just like the industrial revolution that brought us cars, planes, and large cities, so much is going to change and we have little idea of what's in store. That being said, I bet we can predict the near future. Based off current trends, I believe in the next few years that lower skilled employees at game studios will lose their jobs to AI. Already, certain AI models can pass as entry-level engineers at prominent companies, not to mention other entry-level jobs like sales, marketing, and customer support. So entry-level jobs across the board will be automated. However, to bring a little positivity to all this, this also means jobs will be created. We will need people to use these great AI tools and really optimize their output. It's not easy getting ChatGPT to write me the perfect dialogue or Midjourney to create the perfect concept art. The output still feels generic or looks AI generated. They just can't get my nose right. So I believe AI will actually create more higher skilled jobs. We will need people telling AI what to create and we will need people to fix what is created. For example, let's say I wanna make the concept art for an elf character. She should have red hair, green eyes, and I want her hair to be blowing with the wind and leaves. All right, cool. Here's my prompt for mid journey. Let's see what I get. All right, not bad. Pretty incredible actually that it only took me 30 seconds to get some beautiful art, but maybe I want the elf to have a style more similar to Zelda. So I make the adjustment, a few more choices pop up. Nice. This looks to be going in the right direction. I feel like the bottom left one works best for what I'm going for. So let, let's blow it up. Okay, now that it's bigger, I can see a problem. I don't love the middle necklace and it looks like her left eye is kind of blue, not really green. I'm gonna pass this image off to someone good with Photoshop to try to fix it for me. Now we getting somewhere. Ah, it's perfect. And it only took a few minutes. This feels like the future of game development. You know, I'm not positive, but the way I see it is a game concept or idea will be passed from company executives to department directors like the art director, music director, or head of development. Those leaders will then illustrate the vision and give their teams an outline for what needs to be done. From there, an AI engineer will start creating mockups to fit that vision. The mockups will then be passed off to the experts in that department to tweak, polish, and finalize who then pass it off to the team lead for sign off, creating a cycle for generating game content. Will this be applied to every department? Probably not. I doubt development teams have AI writing much code for the time being, and I'm pretty sure you can't use AI to automate HR disputes. Michael! Oh, that's funny. Michael! So we still need humans, and we will for a while. But even when AI can do all of our jobs better than us, I still believe we will want humans making our games. And the best example of this is Red Dead Redemption 2. They chased us from the west, they chased us over the mountains. Red Dead Redemption 2 was one of the greatest games of all time. The locations were inspired by real places, people are always singing, dancing, playing games, or arguing in the game, and the world just feels real most of the time. Oh, now you 
But what made this game critically successful wasn't the landscape, the NPCs, or real world mechanics. It was the story. As you follow Arthur Morgan, a member of the Vanderlyn gang, you feel the tensions rise between Dutch and Arthur. Every moment captivates you and you begin to care about the people involved. So much so, you'd have to be a stone cold killer to not feel something watching that sunrise. And that's the key. AI can mimic human feelings, but it will never understand them. We need humans to create games so we can have human experiences. It's why games made by three people can outperform a game made by thousands. It's not about the quantity, but the quality. It's also why No Man's Sky at launch was so pitiful. Yeah, you could explore thousands of worlds generated by AI, but what do I gain from that? Who cares how big and expansive your world is if I'm not experiencing something fun or unique in that world? Focus first on the experience and the feelings of your player. Then build from there. I'm totally fine playing a game that takes three hours to beat. Don't make games that have 40 hours worth of content, but only four hours worth of fun. Pack it in, simplify. This is a problem so many developers deal with. They focus too much on what they are creating that they forget to ask, why are they creating it? We don't need more bloated messes with terrible gameplay loops. Yes, it's easier than ever to just add that cool feature or mechanic to a game with Unreal or Unity. But I don't care about a day and night cycle if the gameplay is terrible. Too many developers just throw the buffet at the player hoping they'll like something. But this way of thinking is detrimental to the player and the developer. Games are easier than ever to make. And as we saw, they're just getting easier. You think Steam and other platforms are full of janky games. Just wait till other untrained buffoons like me make games with AI tools, but actually publish them. Steam, app stores, and other platforms are about to be flooded with AI trash and copycats. It's going to be harder than ever to stand out and be successful as an indie developer. Which brings me to my main point, be human. All AI does is make humans more efficient. So if you're creating hot garbage and then you start using AI, well, now you're just going to make hot garbage quicker. But if you're making an incredible game with unique experiences, then when you add that day and night cycle or unique NPC dialogue, you're going to make that game better and more fun than you could have without AI. Like everything before it, AI is just a tool, a world changing tool, but a tool all the same. So will it change the way we create games? Of course, it's happening now and it's gonna to continue to happen. But that's a good thing. We are moving towards a future where developers are only inhibited by their imagination. And if we use these AI tools, make sure to focus on the player, maximize the unique experience you provide them and be human. Although there are so many negatives with AI, there are also so many positives. And I'm stoked to see what people will build in the years to come. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. For tradition, we like to highlight an indie game after each video, and this week, our community chose Hyperlight Drifter. For those that haven't played this game, all you need to know is that the pixel art is gorgeous, the gameplay is a blast, every time you think you found the last secret, something else is waiting to be discovered. So when you get the chance, go pick this game up. And if you're a game dev or want to be part of a game dev community, come join our Discord.